the Aboriginal advocates have dedicated the better part of their adult lives to the well-being of our children in this school district and they have been arbitrarily cast aside because some superintendent and others have taken a decision to replace these hard-working, dedicated, committed people, our people, with Aboriginal teachers that so far have not even materialized. Mm. Do you feel that their services are needed? Um, I think their services are essential to First Nation students across the district and yeah it's just something about trust because you can trust one of the advocates in within the district. Yeah. Why do you find that you can trust the advocates? Um, because they've been there the the entire time they understand what goes on on the reserve and in the school what kind of problems are specific to First Nations people. Recently all of the advocates were laid off about a week before the holidays began. At the last AEEA meeting, I went to discussion was how we need to stand up and protect our children's rights as students. And within a couple days of that meeting, all the Aboriginal advocates were laid off or to be laid off at a certain time. Um, where, where does that leave us? Decisions have been made by School District 22 without our input, input and it has to stop. This, situa this situation is indicative of, of a much broader issue, which is the lack of meaningful consultation, communication, and collaboration with Aboriginal people that occurs at all levels, local, regional, provincial, and federal. We have rights! Advocates have made a difference in my life because they've helped my friends and they've helped me and they're just someone to talk to whenever you need help. My advocate helped me with anything I needed. Advocate, advocates can be a difference in all schools. The school district has adopted a slogan. They've started an enhancement agreement, right? I want to talk to you about making Aboriginal education better. That's what they said anyways. And they've gone through the motions and they've started a process. And they've even come up with a slogan. Together for the children. Wow. If this is what together for the children looks like, we're in trouble. I'm Mark Olson and uh, I'm president of QP uh, for the school district. And uh, this, uh, these cuts have affected my workplace as far as uh, some of the members I represent uh, because their their uncertainty and uh, the disruption in the in the workplace has caused them great concern and uh, I think it's affecting uh, the, the employees and the schools and uh, the uh, children all at once at the same time and uh, it's not a good move on, on, the, on their part. I think it could have been handled a little bit better. I went to law school and you read about um, documents in history saying we know what's best for them. We read about documents in history saying they don't know, they're not educated enough, they don't know what's best for them. And when I hear that in 2008 over and over and over again by a school district that says that we know what's best and we don't have to ask, we don't have to tell you, it, it's infuriating. And we are here to send a very strong clear message to the school board that the decisions that they have made in a unilateral, arrogant fashion are absolutely unacceptable to us as parents, as grandparents, as teachers, and as advocates for our children. What do you think the school board should do? I think the school board should be discussing with the First Nation Band, the parents of the First Nation students, and the students themselves. So how do you feel about the school board now? Um, I feel appalled that they came to a unilateral decision for my well-being when it is definitely not in my best interests.